We're back. I'm speaking with the president and CEO of Termaline, Mike Rose. Mike, we had to go to break and I had to cut you off. Um, but let's pick up where we just left off. Sure. Um, I, I mentioned we're a senior. We're the largest nat gas producer in Canada. We have the largest gas reserves and we've actually built and control all our own infrastructure. So that's gas plants and, and pipelines. So we're the fourth la largest midstream company from a gas processing standpoint in Canada. Um, the net result of having that infrastructure and being a low cost uh, capital executor is we've kind of got the lowest supply costs in the basin and uh, as it turns out in North America. So we're, you know, profitable at $1.50 gas prices. So we've kind of built a machine that can survive low prices, which, you know, for the most part in that gas, especially, it's been low for a long time. It's a lot better right now, but, you know, we it's a cyclical business. Um, and we think we've secured the best staff uh, through the years and we've kept it small. So we only have those two big gas plays. So, you know, we're fourth largest producer overall in Canada. We only have 230 people in the head office. So that's good. That's it. Quite a story now, Mike. Many of my entrepreneurs have those bids when they just didn't think they were gonna make it. Did you ever have one of those stories and, and would you share it with us? Yeah, not at Tourmaline, but it was when I left Shell. So, I mean, I was doing well at Shell, and uh, but I had an opportunity uh, with an individual who was kind of the money raiser, and he wanted to, you know, get into the business, and he'd been in it a long time, but he's older than me. Uh, so, you know, I was going to be his technical guy. Um, and so I found a package of properties for him to buy, and he was successful, and then you know, he said, well, you got to run it. So uh, I left Shell. Uh, and then once I was the only employee, <laughs> and then I found out that, well, he hadn't quite raised uh, the 11.7 million we needed. It was only half that he'd raised. Plus, he'd made a commitment on the money he had raised that we had to go public in five months. And like, I knew nothing about that and how to do that because it was kind of a, you know, a geologist from a, a big major where you only do you know, a certain kind of narrow uh, segment of work. Anyway, it, it all worked out, but it was a little stressful in those uh, early days. You know, the financial crisis was an interesting time. I mean, we were going to be fine, except, I mean, if the Western uh, economies like failed, then, you know, I was actually worried because I had a big tax bill because we <laughs> sold Duvernay to Shell. So I actually paid my taxes early. <laughs> just in case, because I mean, the one thing you know for sure is the tax man's still gonna come, uh, whether your currency has been completely devalued or not. And then, you know, during the COVID crisis, it, it was like a really stressful time. Uh, you know, oil went negative, that was kind of new. Uh, <laughs> and so, you know, the company was gonna be fine, but it was a tough time and, you know, staff was, you know, worried and didn't know where the world was gonna go. And, you know, we didn't either, but we were very positive. <laughs> and it all worked out. It's not all sunshine and roses running a company, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, my Canadian company strikes me as having incredible innovation. Could you talk to us about Termaline's innovation? I know you have some really neat innovation uh, that you could share with us. Sure. Uh, I mean, I think, you know, uh, innovation and its innovative application of technology, um, you know, it kind of pervades all aspects of the, the company. Um, you know, particularly in the, the drilling and fracking piece, uh, I mean, the, the drop in costs has been remarkable. So, you know, back in Duvernay Oil Corp days, we were one of the first three companies to figure the Montney play out. And those initial horizontals in the Montney, you know, in 2007, uh, they were like, they took 25 days to drill. And recently, you know, we've been completing horizontals that are almost three times longer in as little as six days. So you can imagine what that's done to the costs and then notwithstanding, we figure out how to make them produce a lot uh, better as well. So uh, we have a whole segment uh, of, you know, innovative things we do on the environmental performance improvement, but I think I'll save that for, for one of the questions later. You know, just from a business standpoint, another place we've been, I think, really innovative is in our approach to natural gas marketing. So it's a strategy we started probably 10 years ago. We knew we were going to be a good sized gas producer and it didn't make a lot of sense to just sell your gas locally at our two hubs that 
people call ACO that's in Alberta and station two that's in BC. So, you know, when it was available, we took out space on all the pipelines exiting the basin. These are existing pipelines. Um, and so we're now the most diversified as far as number of markets we access. So we access 11 markets outside of the basin. Uh, so I'm just going to stop US. you there, Mike, because yeah. we got to go to commercial and we'll be back. Yep. And we'll hear about you this bet. when we get back.